Hello and welcome to Oxford, Ohio. Game three between the Miami Red Hawks and the Kent State Golden Flashes. Hi, I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Carson Byers taking the mound, and let's go ahead and take you through Kent State's starting lineup. Batting leadoff and in center field will be Colin Matthews. And the two hole behind the plate will be Justin Mickness. Mickness going to try and catch every inning in the series. Aiden Longwell will be batting third. He's at playing first base. Michael McNamara, hot off a two home run game, will be cleaning up for the Golden Flashes. Brody Williams getting the start at third base in the five hole. Kyle Jackson out in right field. He's batting sixth. Colton Schaller will be the designated hitter today. He's batting seventh. Josh Johnson will be in left field. He'll be batting eighth. Connor Ashby will be anchoring the lineup. He's playing second base. Carson Byers on the bump for Miami. You can see his statistics right there. A 9.22 ERA, zero in three win-loss. His strikeout to walk ratio, 38 Ks, 23 walks. Normally a midweek starter. He actually started earlier this week against Ohio State. But he's getting a start here in game three as Miami is looking to sweep the formerly top team in the MAC, Kent State. The Red Hawks come in with a 13 and 28 record. Kent State coming in 26 and 12. First pitch from Byers is a swinging strike against Colin Matthews. And first pitch is at 1259, 44 degrees at the start of this game. Very little wind, but it is blowing out to right center field as it was yesterday. We're underneath the lights as it is an overcast sky, so not a whole lot of light peeking through those clouds. Very chilly day here for late April, but we're playing all the same. The 1-1 here to Colin Matthews. Just missing on the outside, change up from Carson Byers. Byers, a freshman from Michigan, five foot nine. As Matthew sends one down the left field line, this is trailing foul, and it will go off the hitting tunnels down the left field line. Four second strike, two ones the count. Byers pitches with a lot of intensity. If you've watched the midweek games, he's normally the man that they pick to start. Was the number two left-handed pitcher in the state of Michigan last year, according to Prep Baseball Report. And the 2-2 runs on the inside. So run the count full. Byers is officially a two-way player on the roster, though he hasn't gotten any at-bats this year. 89 on the gun on the fastball, and that's what you'll see. A change-up fastball, breaking pitch mix. Likes to run that change-up away from right-handed hitters. We'll see if he goes to that here on the payoff. And he does. Fastball tailing away from Colin Matthews. Gets a piece of it, but it winds up in the glove of Tommy Harrison. So let's take you through Miami's defensive alignment. In the battery with Carson Byers will be the freshman Tommy Harrison. And boy, did he have a great hit yesterday. Ryland Zaborowski, Dylan Baker over on the right side of the infield. Over on the left, Evan Applewick and Cooper Weiss out in the pasture. Brian Zapp, Zach McDonald, and Benji Brokemond. So the first pitch here to Justin Mickness misses on the outside. After the two losses yesterday, Kent State has fallen out of first place. They're now in a second place tie with three different teams. Ball State and Central Michigan all sitting at 12 and five. Ohio University stands alone at the top, 13 and five conference record. The two O's in there for a call and strike. Umpires today, Matt Cunningham will be behind the plate. Daryl Morton Jr. down the first baseline and John Sapphire down the third base. 2-1 here, Mickness. Foul over towards the first base dugout. 2-2 two -two the count.
Kent State, Ball State, Central Michigan, all with very strong overall records, 25 and 13 for Ball State and Central Michigan, while Kent State's 26 and 12. But the leader in the conference, OU, has a losing record, 15 and 19, which is surely attributed to their very tough out-of-conference schedule. Full count here to Mickness. The payoff, lefty on lefty as Mickness chokes up on the bat, fouls one towards the first base dugout, and already Carson Byers is having to throw a lot of pitches here in the first inning. Through seven pitches to Colin Matthews. Pitch number eight to Mickness. Runs up and in, and Mickness wins the battle. So one out walk. We'll put a runner on first base for Aiden Longwell. After Longwell's 0 for 5 yesterday, his batting average dropped to 425. So still having an impressive season. Byers misses upstairs. Longwell with an OPS at 1.160. Seven home runs, 55 RBIs. He has 104 total bases this season. As a team, Kent State has 666 total bases coming into today's game. Called strike, evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Bit chillier than it was yesterday, and it doesn't appear like we're going to have any sun at any point today. As Longwell out in front of the changeup from Carson Byers, fouls it into the first base dugout, the count now 1-2. Byers comes set, gets the sign from Tommy Harrison, kicks, deals. Slider running away from Longwell, but he reaches the bat across the zone and sends it out to right field for a base knock. Great pitch from Carson Byers, but an even better job by Aiden Longwell just extending the barrel and sending a ball out to right. Runners on first and second for Michael McNamara. The for the flashes, number 38, Michael McNamara. McNamara comes in batting 294, but it has been the power as of late that has put him in the cleanup spot. He has marked six home runs since April 11th. In fact, he's hit five home runs in the past week. McNamara, a junior from Cleveland, Ohio, graduate of St. Ignatius. We saw a lot of St. Ignatius fans in attendance yesterday. They're in town playing St. X. They came to see their alum in action. And he put on a show, two home runs in game two. Way out in front of that changeup. He could have swung twice. One-two, runners on first and second. Byers kicks, deals, and back-to-back -back changeups have Michael McNamara waving away for the second out. So we'll see Brody Williams. And Williams comes in batting 280, the freshman out of Edieville, Kentucky. He's playing third base today. He's listed as a catcher, got the designated hitter, Start yesterday. Went 0 for 3. But he had a two hit game against Tiffin earlier this week. The 1 0 is that crafty changeup that falls into the zone right in the middle of the plate. But Williams lays off and it's 1 1. Called strike in there to bring the count to one and two. 
And Byers is one pitch away from dancing out of trouble here in the top half of the first inning. Missing on the outside. And the history between these two schools, Miami has won 71 times over the Golden Flashes, while Kent State has the series lead with 106 wins. Swing and strike, and Carson Byers, three strikeouts in the top half of the first inning, gives up a hit and a walk, but they leave him stranded. We head to the bottom half of the first here on Love and Honor Live. Welcome back to here in the bottom half of the first inning. Let's go ahead and take you through Miami's starting lineup. Leading off and playing right field for the Red Hawks will be Benji Brokemont. In the two-hole playing shortstop will be Cooper Weiss. David Novak, the designated hitter, batting three-hole again. The hero from yesterday, Ryland Zaborowski, hit a walk-off home run in game two. He's batting cleanup. He's playing first base. Dylan Baker. We had a triple in game two yesterday. We'll be batting fifth, playing second. Evan Applewick will be playing the hot corner. He's batting in the sixth hole. Brian Zapp out in left field, batting seventh. Zach McDonald batting eighth. He's in center. And Tommy Harrison, who nodded the game up in the ninth inning, getting the start once again behind the plate. And he is anchoring the lineup. Out on the bump for Kent State will be another southpaw, Eric Chalice. See the stats in front of you, a 3-1 record, a 4.57 ERA. He has struck out 40 batters, walked 12. He's got a whip around 1.34, so the third consecutive southpaw that Kent State has deployed against Miami, a sophomore from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Chalice most recently went three in the third. Innings pitched against Akron where he gave up four earned runs. Not a whole lot of strikeout numbers but has been a consistent game three starter for Kent State this season. So leading off will be Benji Brokemon, the redshirt junior from South Holland, Illinois. Brokemon three hits yesterday, three for seven, scored twice. First pitch, and from Shalas, 82 mile an hour in the zone. Called strike, Miami, red bottoms, white top, alternate top for the Red Hawks. Kent State and the Baby Blues. Jollis very slow to the plate. A lengthy southpaw. Sit at six foot one, 195 pounds. Chopped out. To Chalice, and that's going to be a flip over to first base. Nice job fielding the position. And Benji Brokemon grounds out to the pitcher. Let's take you through Kent State's defensive alignment. Mickness will be behind the plate, getting the start there once again. Over on the right side of the infield will be Longwell, and Ashby getting the start over Tim Brook. Williams and McNamara on the left side. Brody Williams, we mentioned the catcher playing at third. And Johnson, Matthews, and Jackson out in the outfield from left to right. Cooper Weiss sends one out to left field. This has a chance. Johnson look it up. And he'll wave goodbye as Cooper Weiss gets Miami on the board. One nothing. That's his 11th home run of the season. And fans, that home run by Weiss was a left field tavern home run. Another lucky fan receives a gift card for left field tavern. So for the second time this series, Cooper Weiss homers in the first inning and gives Miami a 1-0 lead. So 
What a drive from Cooper Weiss. Reminiscent of game one. And now David Novak steps in. Novak on the season, batting 273. He's come on as of late in the series. Has posted a one for six. He scored three times in that 12-3 win in game one. Shalas gets the sign from Mickness, the 2-0 delivery. Misses downstairs, 78 on the gun. And it's 3-0. and Called strike, and Novak will stay in the box for at least one more pitch. 3-1's the count. Ryland Zaborowski on deck. And this will be fouled over the first base dugout. We'll do it here at full. The payoff pitch bounces off Novak, and he leads the team in hit by pitch. And he gets plunked again. He'll take first base. Must not be liked amongst his peers. The Miami first baseman, number 15, Raylan Zaborowski. So now we'll see Ryland Zaborowski. Zaborowski, 16 home runs on the season, a 294 hitter. Hit two home runs, one in each game of the doubleheader. Sends one out to right center field. That'll run out of steam in the gap as Jackson moves over to his right for the second out. First pitch swinging on the looping curveball from Chalice, and it's the second out. So now we'll see Dylan Baker. So we mentioned how David Novak leads the team in getting plunked this season. That's the 13th time he's been hit. The next highest is Brian Zapp, who's been hit by 10 pitches this season. Dylan Baker steps in, takes the first pitch from Chalice on the outside. 1 0 is the count. And there for a called strike, 78 on the gun. We'll get you Chalice's scouting report here in a minute. Novak, not much of a stolen base threat over at first, but does have decent speed. He's four for five on attempts this year. Dylan Baker awaits on the series, two for seven. A triple, run scored, two RBIs. So here's the 2 1. Down the right field line. If it's fair, it's going to be extra bases. It is. Rattling off against the wall. Raving around third is David Novak. There's going to be a relay and a play at the plate. The throw in time as Novak is held up by Coach Aiden. He originally had the windmill arm rounding Novak around third, but the relay from Jackson to Connor Ashby well in time and would have gotten David Novak out by at least 10 feet. So... Hayden holds him up at third, put runners on second and third for Evan Applewick. So Chalice in a bind here in the first inning. Big looping curveball, 67 on the gun. Finds the strike zone. Applewick, 16 RBIs on the season. Would love 17 and 18 right here on the 0-1. Jollis kicks, deals, another curveball. This time misses, loan in. Novak at third, Baker out at second. This time going to the heat. Applewick takes it from here to there. It's a called strike. Wait, 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 wait. 
The one, two. Misses on the outside. The 2-2. Two, two. Hit over the first base dugout. We'll do it again. Applewick on the season. Batting 2-11. Graduate of IMG Academy, a transfer from IU. Trying to hang a crooked number here in the bottom half of the first inning. Curveball misses down in the dirt. And the count is run full. Applewick yesterday didn't have a hit. 0 for 4. 0 for 8, rather, in the doubleheader. But boy, did he hit some balls hard. Pop and foul. And that's why they keep throwing him out there. He's won for his last 17 at the plate, but just a lot of good contact. And if you're a believer in baseball karma, at some point, those strong swings have to fall. If you're a believer in just mathematics, when you hit the ball 100 miles an hour, that should be a hit more often than not. And the 3-2 misses in the turf, so load the bases now for so Brian Zapp. Zap, a 258 hitter. He's got an OPS at 921. And that is because he gets on base 47% of the time, a 469 OBP. Slugs at 452. 27 walks on the season. He only trails Evan Applewick, who just walked moments ago. The senior from Waterloo, Ontario. Awaits the 1 0 lefty on lefty matchup for Chalice and Zap. As the 1 0 finds the strike zone. Two one as Chalice kicks and deals. He misses downstairs. Another miss will bring home a run. Chalice coming into this batter. Already thrown 24 pitches here in the inning. Gets the sign from Mickness. Bases loaded. 3-1 to Brian Zapp. Foul down the line, so the count will run full. Novak over at third, Dylan Baker out at second, Evan Applewick at first. Infield playing straight up. The runners will be on the move. Chalice getting some extra rosin for this 3-2 delivery. The southpaw, Sporting Stirrups, as is the entire team, comes set after getting the sign from Mickness. The payoff. Out to left center field. This will fall. Rounding third, heading for a home is Dylan Baker. Zap sliding into second. Two run score on the bloop single from Brian Zap. Evan Applewick to third. Zap moved to second on the throw that was relayed. And now Zach McDonald will come to the plate with runners on second and third. Jollis already getting a meeting from the from his coaching staff. And we're the three best friends that anybody can have. 
Mike Burbeck out talking to Chalice. Cooper Weiss scored on the solo home run. David Novak, who was hit by a pitch, came around and scored as a Dylan Baker on the base hit from Brian Zapp. And we talked moments ago about Evan Applewick and how he was lacing balls all over the field yesterday but didn't have a hit to show for it. Then Brian Zapp bloops one just beyond the reach of Michael McNamara, the shortstop, and brings home two runs, and that's just the game you play. McDonald first pitch swinging. Bounces one over to Brody Williams, who will throw across the diamond for the 5-3 to three put out. So after the meeting, Chalice throws one pitch and gets out of the jam, but not before the Red Hawks score three runs on three hits. We head to the second here on Love and Honor Live. Miami with a 3 nothing lead. Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. I'm Reed Mouse. Thank you for tuning in. First time I'll plug it. Won't be the last time. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Like the stream. It helps the stream reach more people. Comment in the chat. Let us know how we're doing. And if you're a Miami fan, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Let you know when we go live. Two up for Kent State here in the top half of the second inning will be Kyle Jackson, Colton Schaller, and Josh Johnson. The right fielder, number four, Kyle Jackson. Carson Byers struck out three batters in the top half of the first inning, but had to throw a lot of pitches, 27 to be exact. This is a game where you likely won't see the start that we saw in games one and two from Kitten Egbert and Connor Oliver for the Red Hawks. As the first pitch to Kyle Jackson is fouled back on a bunt attempt. Longest Carson Byers has gone was five innings. That was against Wright State on March the 22nd. He gave up six earned runs, most of which came in the first inning of that game. Byers has been sharp since the beginning of the season. In fact, he has not given up multiple earned runs in an outing since that right state. Gave up seven runs against Georgia Tech in his debut, five against Cincinnati, five against Wright State the first time they played, and then six against Wright State the second time. Since then, he has been very sharp as Kyle Jackson bounces one over to Dylan Baker, who takes two steps into the outfield, fields it on the second bounce, delivers it over to Ryland Zaborowski for the first out. Now the designated hitter for the Golden Flashes, number 11, Colton Schaller. Over his last seven appearances, Byers has thrown 11 innings and has given up four earned runs. As first pitch swinging from Colton Schaller, he's trying for two. Out to left center field, the relay not in time. As Zapp gets it in quickly, but not quick enough, and Schaller has a one-out double. The left fielder, number 32, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson steps in. His third start in the series. 
bats 297 on the season. One for five. And three hits earlier this week against Tiffin. The 1-0 is waved at. Way out in front, that changeup which garnered Carson Byers two of his three strikeouts in the first inning. Gets a swinging strike. So Schaller's out at second base. Schaller pinch hit twice yesterday. The freshman got a hit in game two. which earned him a start here in the third game. Miami looking to get the sweep over Kent State, while Kent State's looking to scrap just one game, and Miami out in front, 3-0, as Carson Byers is looking to hang a zero here in the top half of the second inning, but he's fallen behind Josh Johnson. And it's going to be a one-out walk. So a double and a walk puts runners on first and second with one away. And we'll see Connor Ashby. Ashby, a 171 hitter, sophomore from North Canton, Ohio. Getting his first start of the series as he peeks one through. The four hole, out to right field, a run will score. Benji Brokman tries for Johnson, who was trying to stretch all the way to third base. He slides in safe, Kent State on the board. Ashby, who has had just one hit over the previous seven weeks, brings home a run on his first at bat of the series. Schaller scores. Johnson at third, Ashby at first, and back to the top half of the order in Colin Matthews. Ashby a perfect three for three on stolen bases this season, so he might move. As Byers checks on the runner. Tie run over at first base. Kent State has answered back after giving up three in the bottom half of the opening frame. Called strike at the top of the zone. Kent State disagreed, but our trackman said, yeah, that was the right call. 0-1. Out to right field. Benji Brokman moving to his right, now backtracking. He's underneath it. That will score a run as Brokman just gets it into second base to keep Ashby situated at first. 3-2. Colin Matthews gets the job done on the sacrifice fly as Johnson scores. Number six, catcher Justin Mickness. And we'll see Justin Mickness. Now we mentioned Connor Ashby, a perfect three for three. This would be a nice time for him to try and take second base. And Byers understands that as well. Ashby takes second. You got a runner in scoring position for your starting catcher and one of the best hitters on your team in Justin Mickness. He gets thrown out. You start the next inning with the teeth of your lineup. Tommy Harrison has been very good on the catch and throw. Threw out two base runners in game two yesterday. They didn't get the start in game one. David Novak was behind the plate. Once again, Byers checking on the runner. Mickness, a 318 hitter. With 19 extra base hits this season. Now 
McNiss two for nine on the series. The two one from Byers as he gets the sign from Harrison. Singled out to right field between Connor Ashby's legs as they play a little nutmeg and puts runners on first and second for Aiden Longwell. And they will go out there and talk to Carson Byers. See if Miami gets some action started up in the bullpen. Currently no one getting loose. Byers coming into this at bat against Aiden Longwell. 44 pitches and only one and two-thirds innings pitched. Zach Maxey was fantastic out of the pen. He typically would have been the starter in this ball game. But they searched <coughs> elsewhere. And they go to Byers for his second start of the week. Against Ohio State, he went one inning. Gave up an earned run, struck out one. And boy, would he like to get a strikeout to get out of this inning. Longwell with a single, his first trip up. Two runners on, tie and run out at second base, go ahead run in the form of Justin McNiss at first. First pitch in there for a called strike. Kicks, deals, fouls one off his front foot. Count now 0-2. The 0-2 to Aiden Longwell. Long pause. And it looked as though Ashby might have taken off. He started to run before retreating quickly to second base. Longwell fouls one over the third base dugout. Oh, two. Almost gets Longwell to wave. They'll check down the umpire who's situated behind Carson Byers. Didn't have a great angle at it, and he said no, Longwell did not commit. Byers, who stomps around the mound quite a bit. A lot of energy. Longwell out to the second baseman, Dylan Baker, who makes a crafty play on the backhand. Flips it over to Cooper Weiss for the 4-6 to six put out. Kent State gets back two runs. We head to the bottom half of the second. It's 3-2 to two here on Love and Honor Live. Eric Jollis back out for another inning of work for Kent State. 3 2 our score. We went a full 10 innings yesterday in game two without seeing a crooked number, crooked number hung by either team. Here in game three, we're only three half innings through. And both teams have already made it 3 2. So Tommy Harrison due up for Miami, then back to the top half of the order in Benji Brokemon and Cooper Weiss. And Tommy Harrison, wow, what a swing. Facing off against Mitchell Scott, and I made a big to-do about how Mitchell Scott had gone 21 consecutive innings without allowing an earned run. He 
came in, the freshman, and sent one 432 feet just to the left of the right field foul pole to tie the game up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Then, of course, Ryland Zaborowski came up in the 10th and sent one out to right center field, working with the wind to give Miami the lead and the win. So 1-1 one, one here to Harrison. Weakly grounded over to the second baseman. Connor Ashby who's going to have to hit Chalice on the run. Nice job on the 4-1 to put out. Longwell, the first baseman, had to extend, try to make the play on Tommy Harrison. And what was weakly hit was actually a pretty tough play for Kent State, but they fielded to perfection. They get the first put out. So Benji Brokman steps in. A one to three put out his first time. Jalis sitting at 83 to 85 on the heat. He is ahead in the count 0-2 to Benji Brokmont. Wind still weakly blowing out to straightaway center. As that just missed on the outside. Brokmont awaits the 1-2. Offers, fouls it over the first base dugout. We'll do it again. Chalice missing up and away. Big looping curveball sent down the right field line. Trailing foul. It'll be out of play as Kyle Jackson was on the run to see if he had to make a play. Jollis started 10 games last year as a freshman. As here comes the 2 2. And gets Benji Brokman to wave. First strikeout of the game for Chalice. And there's two away. Chalice threw last season against Miami. Went five and two-thirds innings. Allowed two earned runs. A game in which Kent State lost. Struck out six batters. He had a 5.56 ERA and his 10 starts. Skied high, see if it stays in play. Given Chase is long well, but he's quickly running out of room as that hits off the turf just shy of the grandstand here at Hayden Park. Cooper Weiss with his 11th home run of the season his last time up. Takes the 2-1 on the outside, so we'll do it at 3-1. Weiss with his hit, not only gave his 11th home run of the season, but it put his batting average back up over 300. Four for nine on the series. The payoff, big bender, just looped too late as it misses up. So Weiss will take first base on the two out ball. And we'll see David Novak. Novak steps in the right-handed batter's box. Sets up shop at the back of the box. Stands tall, slightly open stance. A little bend in his knees. Novak is six foot two frame, 205 pounds. Awaits the 0-1 from Chalice. And 
once again, they're checking on Cooper Weiss. Weiss eight for nine on stolen base attempts this season. As a team, Miami has stolen 50, 56 times this year. Chalice comes to the plate on the 0-1, misses on the outside. Count evened up at 1-1. One one. Infield shifted a tad to the left side against David Novak. On a line out to center field, Colin Matthews reaching back and he'll make the play right at the warning track. So Novak hit it hard, but right at Colin Matthews for the third and final out. So we head to the third inning here on Love and Honor Live. It's three to two. Welcome back to McKee Field here at Hayden Park, Oxford, Ohio, game three. Three to our score. Miami won game one, 12 to three. Walked off game two on the Ryland Zamorowski. Home run, 16th on the season. And according to NCAA stats, which haven't been updated for the season, for the weekend yet, 16 home runs would put Ryland Zaborowski at a tie for 10th in the country. Of course, those will be updated, and many on the leaderboard will go deep. Ryland Zaborowski wasn't the lone. So we'll see what, where he lies after the weekend. But for right now, Miami trying to take a sweep over formally on top of the conference Kitt State's. Michael McNamara, who himself has left the yard a couple times this series, twice in game two. Kent State hit three home runs in game two, all solo home runs, as Miami won five to four. One, two. Byers tried that change up on the outside. He got McNamara to wave at it the first time in his first at bats. But McNamara learning from previous mistakes lays off. Counts now two and two after Byers misses in the dirt. Tries the breaking ball at the back ankle of McNamara. And that could be such a tough pitch for a right handed hitter to lay off of. A big sweeping curveball or slider that sits in the zone for the majority of the duration of the pitch's flight, then dives into your back ankle is almost unhittable. Just as that 88 mile an hour heat Number is blown by Michael Third McNamara as Byer sits down the shortstop for the second time in this ball game. Brody Williams struck out his first trip. Byers already at 50 pitch, 55 pitches thrown. Oh, 
The 1-0. Fouled back. And I was scouring this morning looking for the last time that Miami has swept Kent State. You'd have to go all the way back to 2005. Miami went to Kent, Ohio, won all three ball games. Now since then, Kent State has swept Miami a couple of times. As Byers tries the change up on the outside, missing off the edge. So says Matt Cunningham, the home plate umpire. Sent on a line down the right field. But it goes foul, so we'll do it once again, 2-2. Two -two. Dimensions here at McKee Field, 332 down the left field line, 343 down right. Straight away center, it's 400 feet in the gaps. And left center, 376 and 384 in right center. Big league ballpark, but you still see many a home runs leave the yard as Carson Byers gets Brody Williams down on strikes for the second time. So Carson Byers with five strikeouts here through two and two-thirds innings pitched. And four have come against Michael McNamara and Brody Williams. Kyle Jackson grounded out to Dylan Baker his last time. Tries the slider, working away from the left-handed swinging Jackson. It misses. Count is 1-0. and oh. Two O's the count. Uh, get him over change up. Gets the first strike at the at bat. Evan Applewick playing in the grass cut out of the turf. As Byers misses again. It's so strange having to distinguish where defensive alignments are on a turf field. They mirror it to look just like an old traditional grass baseball diamond. Cutouts, grass in the outfield, grass in the infield. Number 11, designated hitter, don't need Colton to do that. And you saw Tyler. that actually with the first few turf fields at the major league level. They didn't originally put the dirt cutouts on the field. It was just all green. Colton Schaller steps in after the two-out walk, so Byers... Misses the zone against Kyle Jackson, and Schaller came around and scored after a one-out double put Kent State in action. Schaller, two for three on the series. Getting the start, his first start of the series here in game three as he takes the breaking ball for a called strike one. One and one the count. Byers keeping close tabs over at first base and Kyle Jackson. Between the South Paul on the mound and Byers and Tommy Harrison, who showed off his cannon, you got to think that Kent State's going to stay put, not push the envelope too often here in game three. Fisted over towards the third baseman, Evan Applewick. And you see the kind of player that Carson Byers is. He's everywhere out on the field. He wanted to catch that ball, but Evan Applewick, the third baseman, calls off the pitcher. And Byers hangs a zero on the board. We head to the bottom half of the third here. It's 3-2. to two.
Lead off for the Red Ox here in the bottom half of the third inning will be Ryland Zaborowski, Dylan Baker to follow, and Evan Applewick after that. 3 2 our score. I'm Ray Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Thank you for tuning in. And Zaborowski out to left center field, number 17 on the season. Yes, sir. Zaborowski with his third home run of the series, 17th on the season. And the first baseman is seeing the ball well. Now has homered in each game of the series, and Miami has a two-run lead. Extra bat, number 21, second baseman, Dylan Baker. So Dylan Baker steps in. What about that? Haven't even settled in on the mound here in the bottom half of the third inning, and Zaborowski gets over top of Shalas. And since went out to left center field. That ball traveled 421 feet out to left center field, and they have a protective net to protect pedestrians and the students that walk along the walkway around McKee Field, and that hit off the net, which sits situated about 20 feet behind the wall. So directly after the home run, Dylan Baker singles out to center field, and Miami in action once again. Third baseman, Evan Applewick. So we'll see Evan Applewick. Starting third baseman, still looking for his first hit of the series. He'll come up with one on. And nobody away. Shalas comes set. Evan Applewick. Begins his swing, and yes, he does eventually come around. So says the home plate umpire, Matt Cunningham. And Shalas is in front of Applewick. The 0-1. Missing on the outside. Nice challenge pitch from the south pole. But Applewick wisely lays off. Applewick walked back in the first inning. Made it all the way to third base before the inning concluded. Home run and a single have began things here in the bottom half of the third. Chalice checking on. Dylan Baker once again. Dylan Baker, a perfect two for two on stolen base attempts this season. And there's no one warming up in the bullpen for Kent State. So just really worried about Dylan Baker over there at first. The 2 1. Chopped over towards the third baseman, Brody Williams. He doesn't field it clean enough to go to second. Instead throws it across the diamond and gets Evan Applewick out in time. A 5-3 to three put out and moving up to second is Baker. Number six, left fielder, Brian. All the fans here at McKee Field at Hayden Park bundled up. Very chilly day. We mentioned it was... 44 degrees at first pitch. Big looping curveball to Brian Zapp. Zapp had that two RBI single back in the first inning. 
was just able to muscle a ball beyond Michael McNamara's reach. Coming set, Chalice ready for the 2-0 against Zap. And Chalice just so worried about what Dylan Baker is doing out there. More often than not, you like to see the pitcher really focus on the task at hand, and that's Brian Zapp. Zapp out to right field. This has a chance. Goodbye. What about that? Lefty on lefty, a game earlier in the season, Brian Zapp wouldn't have even started. And he leaves the yard for the fourth time this season. His first home run since March 17th. Two home runs here in the bottom of the third inning. And Miami's on top six to two and still threatening. McDonald grounded out. Still being a free swinger at the plate. Only saw one pitch in his first at bat. He grounded out to Brody Williams. Falls behind 0-2. Just missing on the edge. Chalice was trying to get McDonald a wave at the fastball. Possibly setting up this 1-2. And once again runs the two-seamer away from the starting center fielder who goes down on strikes for the second out. So in steps Tommy Harrison. Catcher Tommy Harrison. Has the defensive alignment. McNamara and Ashby will move to the right. Ashby with his feet firmly in the outfield cut out of the turf. Breaking ball misses, and Harrison heading the count 2-0. Called strike, and Harrison's all smiles at the plate. As the 2-1 is swung on and missed. Out to Connor Ashby, who doesn't field it cleanly, but stays with it and gets Tommy Harrison out at first base. Second time he's grounded out to Ashby, and the second time Ashby's made a nice play. 6-2 our score as we head to the fourth inning. Miami leaves the yard twice, plates three runs here on Love and Honor Live. Josh Johnson, Connor Ashby in the back to the top half of the order and Colin Matthews here in the top half of the fourth inning a little bit of sun shining through the clouds getting brighter out here at McKeith Field at Hayden Park hello, I'm Reed Mouse thank you for tuning back in through three, Miami leading 6-2 to two. 
Carson Byers out to navigate through the fourth inning. 70 pitches already on the day. And Miami does have a lefty working in the bullpen. So if Carson Byers gets in trouble, they can go to him. We mentioned he's only gone longer than three innings one time this season. Josh Johnson walked, came around, and scored his last time. Johnson, right-handed swear, sets up with a slightly open stance. Back of the right-handed batter's box, takes the first pitch from Byers for a called strike. Byers, rides high, count is now one and one. The two and one. Misses down. And once again, Josh Johnson in a great hitter's count. Wind blowing out to right center field quietly. As Byers gets a swinging strike, just tickling the hairs on the leather. Count is full. So the payoff pitch. From Byers to Johnson is fouled back. We'll do it again. Miami, after the conclusion of this series, will travel up to West Lafayette, Indiana to take on Purdue. As Byers and Johnson, the battle continues. They then travel to Michigan to play Central Michigan. It'll be the third consecutive weekend that Miami will play one of the top teams here in the MAC. Competitive series against OU last weekend, one in which they only took one game. Probably should have taken at least a pair, if not the whole series. As one game went to extras, and another Miami was leading 10 to three in the bottom half of the eighth inning before losing 13 to 10. So a leadoff walk. And Connor Ashby will step to the plate. That at bat went eight pitches. Ashby one for one. Singled home or run. Mentioned it was his first hit in seven weeks, Connor Ashby. The 2-0 to the starting second baseman. Misses, and Tommy Harrison's going to go out there and talk to Carson Byers. Cooper Weiss, Carson Byers, Tommy Harrison having a meeting of the minds out on the bump. Now Miami played it three runs in the bottom half of the first inning. Kent State roared back for two, and of course... Miami scored three runs there in the bottom half of the third, and Kent State looking to answer back once again. And it's back-to-back -back walks to start the fourth, and we'll see if Miami opts to go to their bullpen. Once again, back to the top half of the order in Colin Matthews. Matthews. Matthew steps in, 0 for 1. A sacrifice fly, his last trip up. Byers checking.
The 1-0 here to Matthews. Change up right over the heart of the plate, but it is a called strike. Johnson out at second, Ashby at first, representing a great bit of speed on the base pass for Kent State and a call strike two at the top of the zone. Kent State didn't like that call. But Byers ahead on Colin Matthews, one, two. He's already struck him out once today as Matthews fouls it back. Lined down the third baseline and foul. Jeff Duncan had a dance out of trouble. That was that changeup once again. Matthews got a barrel on it, but. Was able to stay alive. <laughs> Byers on the one two, tries the heater. Lost control as that rides way high. The count is now two and two. Two on, nobody away. Infield playing straight up. Though Dylan Baker is having to patrol near the second base bag to hold Josh Johnson. This curve ball falls into the turf and the count is full. Byers comes set, kicks, deals, ball four. So after getting three runs in the bottom of the third, Byers has loaded the bases all on walks. And the talk out to the starting pitcher, and that has been where Byers has gotten himself in trouble this season. We mentioned the stats at the top of the broadcast. He has a 9.22 ERA coming into today, and that will see the end of Carson Byers. He had 23 walks in 27 innings pitched. So just couldn't consistently find the zone. We'll step aside. When we come back, we'll have a new arm to tell you about. Top of the fourth here, 6-2 R score. Nick Vardifus taking the mound in relief of Carson Byers. Vardifus on the season. This will be his 18th appearance. Vardifus has a 6.0 ERA, has struck out 28 banners, has walked 12. He'll face off against the starting catcher, Justin Mickness. 
tying run at the plate, and the first pitch gets by Tommy Harrison, and that'll be a run. So three consecutive walks load the bases for Kent State, and a wild pitch will bring home a run. It's 6-3. to three. Josh Johnson is scored for the second time today. Connor Ashby moves up to third. Colin Matthews to second. And the count is 1-0 to McNiss. Can't close the book yet on Byers. Check swing. They will look down the third baseline, and they say no. McNiss did not come around. Vardavis, a true freshman, threw two innings against Ohio State earlier in the week, allowed one earned run, and gets a swinging strike to bring the count to one and up. He threw four innings in relief work against OU last weekend. Was very sharp out of the pit, only allowing two hits, no runs. Not a lot of strikeouts. Draws a lot of contact. He could use a strikeout here as there's runners in scoring position with nobody away. The 3-1. Called strike two. The count is full. The payoff pitch. Lefty on lefty as Mickness chokes up. Swinging strikeout. Mickness is retired for the first time today, and that's the first out for Vardavis and the Red Hawks. So now Aiden Longwell steps in. He's one for two. A single, and he grounded out to second base his last time. Longwell with 55 RBIs this season. Ball bounces and gets through the legs of Tommy Harrison as that'll be another run scored on a wild pitch. Connor Ashby comes across, it's now six to four, and Colin Matthews moves up to third. So Kent State has not drove in a run this inning. In fact, they haven't even put a ball in play. Three walks and a strikeout thus far here in the top of the fourth. The 1-0 runs away from Longwell and misses. Two and zero. Fouled straight back. Out to right field, Benji Brokemon backtracking. He'll have it for the second out. Doesn't even worry about getting in as Colin Matthews could drapes his way home. And the score is now 6-5. So Kent State hangs back the three runs that they surrendered. And it's a one-run ball game. Michael McNamara. So a sacrifice fly for the second out. And it's going to be fouled down the right field line. McNamara 0 for 2 with two Ks. Miami scored their three runs on two home runs in the bottom of the third. And then just handed them back. Three walks. Two wild pitches and a sacrifice fly. And we're back to a 6-5 to five ball game, a one-run ball game at that. 0-1. Taken for a ball. Another RBI 
for Aiden Longwell. 56, which leads the MAC. And now Michael McNamara looking to put the ball in play for the first time this ball game. Lined over the Jay Hayden Baseball Center and foul. Counts two and two. Vardavis comes set. Infield playing straight up. A 2-2 delivery. Breaking ball. Misses out of the zone. 75 on the gun. Byers on the 3-2 is popped down the right field line. Benji Brokman on a full race as he will get to the line, but the ball will fall. It looked as though Benji Brokman didn't see it right off the bat as he took a few steps back and had a late break at the ball. If he had a good jump, he would have gotten there in time. Luckily, the ball trickled foul. So we'll do it again here at 3 2. Check swing. They'll look down the first base line. They say no. McNamara did not go, so it's ball four. Fourth walk in the inning for Miami. And it's Brody Williams who has struck out twice as well. Brody Williams. can officially close the book on Carson Byers. He went three innings, gave up five runs, or rather three earned runs. Walked six, struck out five, four hits given up. As Vardavis falls behind Brody Williams. And Walk has not been a problem for Nick Vardavis this season. He's walked 12 in his appearances. As it is chopped foul. In fact, he has not had multiple walks in an outing in almost seven weeks, dating back to March 7th, when he walked three batters against Wright State. Two one, as Vardavis comes set, kicks deals, sent out to center field. This is set for a ride. Zach McDonald back against the warning track. Middle camp underneath it for the third and final out. So Kent State gets three back. They're down a run, off of zero hits. Six five as we head to the bottom of the fourth here on Love and Honor Lot. Keep rope on.
Top of the order due up for Miami here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. 6-5, our score. Benji Brokman, Cooper Weiss, David Novak. Jollis still out. On the bump for the Golden Flashes and the first pitch to Benji Brokman misses on the outside. As Chalice falls behind 2-0. Much slower pace here in game three than we saw in games one and two. And part of the reason is just the pitching matchup. A lot of long at-bats, a lot of walks. We got the first two games done in about two and a half hours each. One game had 15 runs scored. The other had extra innings. As Brokemon weakly grounds one over to Connor Ashby, who gloves it cleanly and flips it over to Longwell for the first out. We're here at an hour and a half into game three, and we're only in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cooper Weiss. So Cooper Weiss steps in. Weiss, a home run and a walk already on the ledger. Over to the third baseman, Brody Williams, who doesn't field it cleanly, quickly recovers, picks it off the turf, and throws it across the diamond for the second out. Nice play. It's been a couple times that both Brody Williams and Connor Ashby, who are substitutions today, right? They get the start here in game three, haven't had the start in games one or two in the field, that they haven't fielded the ball cleanly, but still recover and make the play. So a five to three put out for the second out, and David Novak steps in, first pitch swinging. O2 here to Novak. Novak 0 for 1. Flew out to center field his last trip. Was hit by a pitch, came around and scored back in the first inning. And here's an 0-2 single out to center field. If you've been around baseball long enough, you've seen the charts that signify how the percentages of getting a hit shift depending on the counts. And typically when hitters come to the plate and fall behind 0-2, their chance of getting a hit ride below right around 100. But a nice job by David Novak at delivering a two-strike, two-out hit to center field to keep the inning rolling in. Ryland Zaborowski steps up. The league leader in home runs with 17. And there for a called strike. Eric Chalice comes set, the 1 1. Missing low and away, and they are treading lightly around Zabo. Zaborowski with a home run in each game of the series. And each home run impressive in their own right. The last one went 420 feet, hit off the protective netting. Out in left center field. The home run in game two was a walk off. And the home run in game one was an absolute laser. And speaking of lasers, a base hit to center field just beyond the diving glove of Connor Ashby. Ashby was shaded over towards the middle of the field and almost was right in position to make the play. Dylan Baker. Two on, two away. Good. 
Baker two for two already, scored in both trips, a double and a single. Chalice. Gets the sign from Mickness. He's ready to go. Bounces away from Mickness. Advancing 90 feet is both David Novak and Ryland Zaborowski. So the middle of the order comes up with two outs, back to back singles, and now a wild pitch has two runners in scoring position for Dylan Baker, who's had a great series. He's ahead in the count, 2 1. Mickness lowers the signs. Chalice agrees. The 2-1 gets a waving swing from Baker. And the count is knotted up at twos. Two on, two away, two twos. The count to the second baseman, Dylan Baker. Called strike three, Chalice. A huge strikeout to leave two runners stranded. Six to five, our score. We head to the top of the fifth on Love and Honor Live. the top of the fifth inning. Quick recap of the game already. Kent State's five runs, two came in the second inning, three came last frame. Miami's played in three runs in the first, three in the third. And that's how we're at six to five. Nick Vardavis out for another inning of work and relief. Aubrey Mouse. For the tuning in. The right fielder, Kyle Jackson. Due up for the Golden Flashes is Kyle Jackson. Jackson moved down in the order today with the leadoff man in games one and two. Now batting in the six hole. Oh for one on the day. Walked his last trip. Seven walks already in the ball game for Miami. And we mentioned the stats yesterday. Miami consistently, or if you look at the K per nine, rather, Miami's top five in the country. But if you look at the walk per nine, they're well in the bottom 10%. Three one here to Jackson, and it's ball four. A lead off walk for the second consecutive inning. Colton Schaller steps in.
Schaller steps in, left-handed hitter. One for two. Doubled, came around and scored back in the second inning. Wind has subsided. Getting gloomy once again here in Oxford. Rounded over to Dylan Baker, chance to turn two. The relay over to Cooper Weiss, over to first, and Ryland Zaborowski, the stretch in time. So the leadoff walk is negated thanks to the four to six to three double play. Just what the doctor ordered. And there's two away here in the fifth. Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson weakly over in the four hole. Dylan Baker on a slide. Can't transfer it over to his throwing hand after fielding it cleanly. Josh Johnson very speedy. Working 90 feet down the first baseline and speed it out as Dylan Connor Baker didn't even have a chance to make a throw. Vardavis checks on Josh Johnson. First hit that Vardavis has surrendered. And once again, checking on Johnson. Johnson on the season, 15 for 18 on stolen base attempts. Johnson eighth in the Mac in stolen bases. There are 17 base runners in the Mid-American Conference that have more than 10 stolen bases. We'll tell you more about that as after Evan Applewick throws a one hopper over to Zaborowski who scoops it out of the turf. Four or five to three put out and the final out. Miami hangs a zero on the board, six to five our score as we head to the bottom half of the fifth. Welcome back to Love and Honor Live. We're here at McKee Field at Eden Park on a gloomy Sunday. I'll tell you what, when you dream up your weekend, you don't pass much for 44 degrees and gloom in the middle of April. Eric Jollis back out on the mound for the Golden Flashes. Starting the inning with 90 pitches. They're asking him to go a fifth inning. Called strike, Evan Applewick, Brian Zab, Zach McDonald do up. So six, seven, eight in the Miami order. Oh, one misses on the outside. Field shifted a tad to the left uh, against Applewick. Applewick sends one on a line out to center field. Colin Matthews going back to the warning track. And once again, it's a hard out for Evan Applewick. 
We've seen that story unfold before where he finds a barrel, sends it on a line somewhere, and he just winds up in the leather of a Golden Flash defender. So the line out for the first out brings up Brian Zapp, and Zapp left the yard his last trip up. Two for two. Four RBIs already for Brian Zapp. Zap skies one out of play. That sent straight up. Zap brought two home on a single back in the first inning. Then added on with a two run home run his last time. Chalice, the 2-2, breaking ball, misses up and in. And the payoff pitch to the left fielder. Swing and strike out. They retire Brian Zapp for the first time today, and Zach McDonald steps in. Center fielder, Zach McDonald. McDonald has seen four pitches this ball game. And for the first time, he lays off one. Free swinger steps in, center fielder. A lot of pop in the bat of McDonald. That's it anywhere from the cleanup spot to down here in the eight hole. McDonald, one for 11 in the series. Went 0 for 5 in game one, one for four. And the conclusion of the doubleheader yesterday. Now looking to find his first hit here in game three. 2-2 two -two here to McDonald. Chalice misses, and the count is run full once again. The payoff, fouled straight back. Infield playing straight up against McDonald. Some speed at the plate as he'll pop one foul. Pitch number eight to the center fielder. Out to left center field, this has a chance. And it's gone. We mentioned the pop in the bat of Zach McDonald. And the center fielder leaves the yard. The fourth home run in the ball game for Miami as they make it a two run ball game at seven to five. Cooper Weiss with a solo shot back in the first. Ryland Zaborowski with a solo home run in the third. Brian Zapp with a two-run home run in the third as well. And then that solo home run from McDonald makes the fourth home run for the Red Hawks by a fourth different batter. Their ninth hit of the ball game. Eerily similar to what Kent State was able to produce yesterday, in which they had market three solo home runs in game two. Tommy Harrison goes the opposite side of the field as it's trailing foul and hits off the top of the hitting tunnels down the left field line. Two-two. 
Missing on the outside. Harrison has grounded out to second base in each of his first two trips. Ball four will put a runner on first for Benji Brokmond. Number 11, Benji Brokmond. Third consecutive batter to go full against Eric Chalice. He will start this at bat against Benji Brokmond with 114 pitches. And it looks like that might be the end for the South Ball. Slow walk out to Chalice. There's two away, one run already plated here in the fifth inning. Miami has hung a crooked number in the first inning and the third. And there's not an immediate to go to the right-hander warming up for Kent State. Don't have a number, but it looks like this might be it for Chalice as Kent State is exiting the dugout to talk to their starting pitcher. So we'll step aside, we'll have a new arm to tell you about when we come back here on Love and Honor Live. Welcome back here to McKee Field at Hayden Park. Calvin Bickerstaff will tow the rubber for Kent State with two away here in the top half of the order due up for Miami. Bickerstaff a 6.63 ERA. This will be his 16th appearance on the season. His throw 19 innings, has struck out 17, has walked 7. 86 to 91 on the scouting report, a slider and a change up in the mix. Brokemon out to right center field. Kyle Jackson moving into the gap. He'll be underneath it for the third and final out. So Bickerstaff comes out of the bullpen and gets the third out, but Miami does get a run back off the home run from Zach McDonald. 7 5 our score as we head to inning number six.
Welcome back to Oxford, Ohio, McKee Field at Hayden Park. You're watching Love It On Her Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Three mounts calling all nine innings here. Sean Dixon, producer extraordinaire, to my left. First time watching Chatterbox Sports. We invite you to subscribe. Go ahead and like this stream. And hit that notification bell. Let you know when we're going live. Nick Vardavis back out for another inning of work. Matthews. And he'll face off against the top half of Kent State's order. Colin Matthews, Justin McNiss, Aiden Longwell. Vardavis will hit Colin Matthews on the first pitch. Third free pass allowed by Vardavis. Came into the inning throwing 33 pitches. Usually a consistent strike thrower hasn't been necessarily the case, but he has been able to get out of trouble after a leadoff walk last inning. He got a 4-6-3 to six to three double play. But now he's facing off against the top of Kent State's order, and Justin McNiss steps in. McNiss one for two. A walk, a single, and a strikeout. Mickness. He struck out swinging his last time. That was against Vardavis, the first batter that Vardavis saw. Ground ball out to Dylan Baker, over to Cooper Weiss, and for the second consecutive inning, Vardavis has allowed a leadoff free pass and then a 4-6-3 to six to three. double play has negated it. It's almost like he's drawing it up that way. Number five. Aiden Longwell. So now we'll see Aiden Longwell. One for two, sacrifice fly. A single and a ground out. And that'll hit Longwell. Longwell recognized it immediately. Tommy Harrison looks as though he's a little perplex and now coach Danny Hayden will come out and talk to Matt Cunningham. You definitely heard something get hit. But now coach Hayden's saying that that should have been called for leaning in. It wasn't a bad pitch. Michael McNamara. And it barely skinned Longwell so much that Tommy Harrison was still able to catch the ball. So now Michael McNamara steps up. McNamara has yet to put the ball in play today. Two strikeouts and a walk. Vardavis comes set. And the changeup, Ryan Ty. Popped high out to center field. Zach McDonald went back two steps and now is racing in. It falls before the center fielder. Rounding third and being held up at third will be Aiden Longwell. So Zach McDonald took two hard steps directly back and then immediately started coming racing in. Dylan Baker raced out to center field to make a play. Cooper White stayed home to guard the bag. And it falls in front of McDonald for a base hit. And there's runners on second and third, two away for Brody Williams. So a single. Actually, they said, I'm going to call that a double, which is fair as it bounced over McDonald's head. It wasn't because he threw it anywhere on the diamond. It was just because it bounced so high that 
McNamara was able to take second base. So Williams coming in with the tying run out at second base. Called strike gets Vardavis ahead, 0-2. Two on, two away, two strikes here to the freshman, Brody Williams. Works away from the right-handed bat. It's a called ball. Count is down one and two. Popped foul. We'll do it once more here at one and two. They'll go out and talk to Vardavis here on the one two. So a quick recap of the inning. A hit by pitch began this top half of the sixth frame, then immediately got a ground ball double play. A long well. Just nicked his front elbow. And Michael McNamara popped one up into center field, and McDonald couldn't come down to make the play. It's been a strange inning, to say the least. But here we are with two away, two on, and two strikes to the starting third baseman, Brody Williams, who can tie this game up if he finds some outfield turf. Artavis gets a chopper from Brody Williams. Going to be a tough play. Baker on the bare hand over to first in time. Only option was to go to his bare hand. He threw a strike over to Ryland Zaborowski just in time for the third out. Tough play, but the defense comes through in the clutch. 7-5 to five as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning, Calvin Bickerstaff back out for some work for Kent State. Cooper Weiss, 2-3-4, two, 2-up two for Miami. 7-5, the Red Hawks lead. They are nine outs away from taking the sweep over the golden flashes. And first pitch swing, and Cooper Weiss pops one out to deep right field. Back against the warning track. Jackson will be underneath it for the first down. So one pitch, one out here in the bottom of the sixth. And we'll see David Novak, who had a single his last trip. David if you recall, Novak. Novak and Ryland Zaborowski had two consecutive two-out singles, but were unable to come around and score. That was back in the fourth inning. First pitch swinging, Novak comes up empty. Pops one up in the infield. Bickerstaff's getting underneath it, being called off by Brody Williams, the freshman, who works over to his left and will put the squeeze on for the second out. And we'll see Zabo, Ryland Zaborowski. Ryland Zaborowski. Zaborowski, two for three. A fly out, a home run, and a single. 
First time facing off against Bickerstaff, and Bickerstaff's looking to make it a quick one, two, three here in the bottom half of the sixth. Zaborowski on a line out to center field, but Colin Matthews is right there. Very quick half of the inning. Has two great swings, one from Cooper Weiss and Ryland Zaborowski are all for naught as they go right to the outfielders. We head to the seventh inning here. It's seven to five in Oxford. For the Red Hawks. To the top of the seventh, the key field at Hayden Park. Watch them loving on our live here on Chatterbox Sports. The softball game just concluded. Miami with a sweep over the Akron Zips. They stay at the top of the MAC. Meanwhile, the Red Hawks over here on the baseball diamond looking to complete a sweep. Vardavis back out there. He'll face off against the bottom half of Kent State Golden Flash's starting lineup. Kyle Jackson, Colton Schuyler, and Josh Johnson do up. I'm Reed Mouse. Thank you for joining us. Vardavis at 44 pitches. It's a half swing from Jackson, but Jackson doesn't come around. Vardavis has thrown now three complete innings. Has struck out one, walked two, has hit two. In fact, we mentioned it. The previous two innings have started the exact same way. A hit by pitch, immediately followed by a four to six to three double play. And Dylan Baker has been phenomenal here in this series. A lot of names that you can think about and why Miami has taken the first two games and now lead by two runs in the final three frames here in game three. You know, Ryland Zaborowski who's hit a home run in each game. Connor Oliver, Kent Egbert who were phenomenal in starts in games one and two. Cooper Weiss has been great. He's left the yard twice. But Dylan Baker shouldn't go unappreciated. He's made some nice plays defensively, has had a nice stick and was capitalized by that bare hand play that concluded the top half of any number six. That surely would have been a run. Instead, Miami got to go into the dugout and recoup. It's a five pitch walk to begin things here in the top of the seventh. 11, Colton Schaller. So for the third consecutive inning, Nick Vardavis has allowed the leadoff base runner to get aboard. Nine walks in the game for Miami. And a few hit by pitches. Schaller. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. Tell you what, if Vardavis rolls up another double play, it's all just part of his master plan. 0-1 oh, the count here to Schaller. Applewick playing in just a few inches in front of the baseline over there at third. Infield at double play depth. One and one the count. Vardavis went back to the breaking ball. 
And it's over to Cooper Weiss. It's a line out, and what about this? Wasn't a ground ball double play, but the line drive directly to Cooper Weiss, and then the flip over to Ryland Zamorowski to get Kyle Jackson, who was off of first, and for the third consecutive inning, Nick Vardavis gets a double play 32. after allowing the leadoff Johnson. man to reach a board. So now Josh Johnson steps in, and he has been a thorn in Miami's side. Has scored twice, has walked twice, and has a base hit. Oh, one the count to the outfielder. Oh, two the count. Now, one thing that Vardavis has not been able to do in the previous two innings is after getting that double play to close the door and get back in the dugout. Josh Johnson came up last time after Colton Schaller grounded into a double play and had a base knock. Recall it was that tough play that Dylan Baker almost made where he slid into right field, fielding a ground ball, but couldn't get it into his throwing hand to get Josh Johnson out at first. One, two. Harrison, Vardavis in unison. Vardavis ready for the one, two. And the turf, 79 on the gun. And we'll do it at 2 2. Misses high and away, run the count full. So, in danger of walking Johnson for the third time this ballgame, they have been unable to get him out. Artifice gets the sign from Harrison, who's setting up on the inside. The payoff. Just missing the zone. Trying for the off speed. And it's the third time that Josh Johnson has walked, the fourth time that he's reached a board. And it's Connor Ashby. Ashby, 0 for 2. Walked, came around, and scored back in the fourth inning. He's also grounded out to Vardavis. And Evan Applewick, the third baseman. And this seems like a time in which you might want to get Josh Johnson up and moving. So Vardavis checks on Johnson. I was going to bring up this point earlier, but there are 17 base runners in the MAC with 10 or more stolen bases. Johnson being one of them, currently sits at eighth with 15. Only two have more than 18. That is Eric Aredo from Northern Illinois with 20. But Jerron Williams from the Toledo Rockets has 35 stolen bases this season. Almost more than double. Who's in third place in the league, Christian Michel. So one of the count here to Ashby. Showing bunt. Ashby who's getting the start here for Tim Brook, and that was mostly because Tim Brook, who has been an everyday starter, failed to get any offensive output in the doubleheader yesterday. So they turn to Ashby, who actually gets his first hit. An RBI single back in the second inning since March 7th. One one is in there for a called strike. Tommy Harrison couldn't hold on to it. But it's a call strike all the same.
Two away, two strikes. Vardavis comes set. Chops one high in the infield. Dylan Baker is going to have to barehand it. Once again, he does, but the throw is not in time. I've talked about that at length this season and just the different hops that we've seen because of the turf playing surface. If that's on grass, if that's on dirt, you don't see those high bounces. Almost works like a trampoline. And now Coach Hayden's going to go out there and talk to dispute the call at first base. Hayden toes right up against the third base line as to not come into the field of play. Instead, making John Sapphire come to him, and they're talking it out. And I wonder if there was a little bit of a roadblock for Dylan Baker getting to that ball from Josh Johnson. But if the play is upheld, that'll be the second hit of the ball game for Connor Ashby. And though it's not how you imagine getting a base knock, it's a two-hit game all the same. And when you're batting 170, you'll take anything you can get. So Hayden spoke his piece. And the game will continue. Tie and run out at first base. There's two away here in the top half of the seventh, and it looks like we might see a pitching change. They will go to a right-hander in the bullpen. So Nick Vardavis' day is done after throwing three and two-thirds innings. We'll see a right-hander when we come back. Stay tuned. You're watching Love It On Live. Top of the seventh here in Oxford. Two away, two on here for Colin Matthews. And Patrick Mastry in the fourth will come in. Relief of Nick Vardavis trying to get this final out. Mastry in a 9.45 ERA. This will be his 13th appearance on this season. Has struck out 29 batters. Has walked 16. Has hit a bit of a snag as of late as he has given up at least two earned runs in each of his last four appearances and before he throws the first pitch he tries to check on Josh Johnson out at second base and it gets into the outfield and both runners will move up 90 feet which means the tying run is out at second base Johnson at third Ashby at second mastery in the fourth 
His first pitch to Colin Matthews. Misses, 91 on the gun. Matthews 0 for 1, a sacrifice fly, a hit by pitch, and a walk. As he's ahead in the count, 2 0. Mastrian comes set. Chopped over towards Evan Applewick. Going to be a tough play for the third baseman. One hop over to Ryland Zaborowski, the second hop. Zaborowski fields it, but not in time as Colin Matthews beats out the throw. It was the second bounce that drastically slowed down the throw from Evan Applewick. And a run scores, and now 90 feet away is the tying run, the go-ahead run over at first base in the form of Colin Matthews. So a walk, a base hit after the double play. And a single will bring home a run. The eighth hit of the ball game for Kent State. And Justin McNiss steps in, working on a one for three. Mastrian comes set, misses. Tough play. It's now the second time this inning that we've seen those high bouncers work to the advantage of Kent State. Called strike to Mickness. Foul tipped. We'll bring the count to two and two. So Ashby over at third. Josh Johnson already scored. Matthews over at first. Tying run 90 feet away. Can Mastrian dance out of this trouble with the lead intact? Running on the pitch is going to be Colin Matthews, which opens up the left side of the field. The swing from Mickness gets through and into the outfield, and it's seven all. Just a beautiful baseball play on the hit and run. Opening up the field. Mickness going with the pitch. And he ties the game at seven. Five, Aiden Longwell. So there's runners on first and third, two away. And the leader in the conference and RBI steps to the plate, Aiden Longwell. Longwell, the leader in RBIs, the leader in hits, and the leader in total bases. And once again, Mastrian falls behind the hitter. The 2-0. They get Mickness jumping towards second base, but a pickoff attempt not in time. Mastrian comes set. Just missing on the edge. 90 on the gun. Count now 3 0. Oh. Four-pitch walk will load the bases for Michael McNamara. 38, Michael McNamara. Matthews at third, Mickness at second, Aiden Longwell at first. And Kent State has reached the board on five consecutive batters without truly hitting the ball hard. Ashby's high chopping. Infield single, then Colin Matthews did the exact same thing a batter later. 
Justin Mickness with a single on a hit and run. And they're just playing the game. Once again, Mastrian falls behind the hitter this time. It's Michael McNamara who comes in one for three. Just missing on the edge. And six balls in a row. Mastrian has yet to get ahead of a batter. The runners are on base, are all his. Close the book on Nick Vardavis. As we have a brand new ball game and we're one pitch away from Kent State taking their first lead of the game. Mastrian comes up with a strike, 3-1. Called strike two. So the runners will be moving with the pitch. 3-2, two, two away. And Mastrian misses. First time in the ball game that Kent State has taken the lead. It's 8-7. Matthews scores for the second time. Mickness moves up to third. Longwell to second. And we'll see Brody Williams, the ninth batter of the inning. Miami has now walked 12 batters in this ball game. For Kent State, coming to the plate, number 21, Jake Casey. A game in which they have four home runs. And the opposing team has just two extra base hits. They are now trailing. So we'll see Jake Casey hit. And Brody Williams' spot. Brody Williams is 0 for 4. Jake Casey, who got the start in game one and two, now coming off the bench. And Mastrian falls behind him. Good. 2 0 now to Casey. Casey batting 231 on the season, 23 RBIs, second on the team in home runs. Has not been seeing the ball well. As he is two for his last 25. So Mastrian looking to find the zone. And he does. Two one the count. Jay Casey swings at the two one. It's flown out to left field. Brian zaps underneath it, but the damage has been done. Kent State plates three runs on a couple of infield singles. We head to the bottom of the seventh at stretch time, and Kent State has an 8 7 lead.
All right, here we go. Bottom of the seventh inning here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. 8-7 our score. You see the stat line in front of you. Miami has hit four home runs in this ball game, but they trail a run, and that is because they have walked 12 batters. Have not been efficient, but you know who has? It's Calvin Bickerstaff, the right-handed pitcher for Kent State, who has came in relief for the Golden Flashes through an inning and a third. He has thrown just seven pitches. So hitting here for Miami is Dylan Baker. He'll be followed by Evan Applewick and Brian Zapp. Two O's the count to Baker. And he'll fly one out to left center field. Johnson moving to his left. He'll be caught off by Matthews. He'll be underneath it for the first out. So Bickerstaff gets the lead off, man. And it's Evan Applewick. Evan Applewick. And Evan Applewick's working on 0 for 2. One of three batters in the lineup without a hit. Him, Benji Brokmont, and Tommy Harrison. Applewick lined to out to center field his last time. As he takes the first pitch for a called ball. Bickerstaff finding the zone. Goes to the slider. And he wants to count up at once. This ball in the dirt. <laughs> and Bickerstaff has a 3-1 count against Evan Applewick. Applewick with a notorious eye. Him and Brian Zapp alike. Get on base at a high clip. 31 walks coming into the game for Applewick, and he'll have a second of the ball game. The next number six, Brian Zapp. So now we'll see Brian Zapp. And Zapp, two for three, a home run, a single, and a strikeout. This pitch misses on the inside. Applewick over at first base representing the tie and run, and they'll go talk to Bickerstaff. And there is a right-hander getting loose in Kent State's bullpen. It's Jordan Kalinda. So thank you for tuning in here to Loving on Life here on Chatterbox Sports. I always appreciate doing these games. First year doing Miami Spring Sports. We'll be back here at McKee Field after this three-game series on May 5th through the 7th for a three-game tilt against the Akron Zips. Be on the softball diamond next weekend as they're looking to sure up a host bid in the MAC tournament. So the 1 0 to Brian Zapp is popped foul out of play. Four teams make the baseball MAC tournament. Ohio. Kent State, Ball State, and Central Michigan look to have that shirt up without something falling apart as Central Michigan, Ball State, Kent State 12 and five coming into today, Ohio 13 and five. Miami sitting at nine and 11. Zap pops one foul to even the count up at two and two. Miami currently sits sixth in the conference. Mark that seventh, apologize. The 2-2 is waved at by Brian Zapp. 
And Bickerstaff gets an important out number two. So now we'll see Zach McDonald. He had a home run his last trip. That was the last run scored by Miami back in the fifth inning. And Bickerstaff kicks, deals, and finds the strike zone. First strikeout out of the pin for Bickerstaff. And he gets a swinging strike over McDonald. McDonald isn't afraid to hack. He's, he does not get cheated up there at the plate. He's behind 0-2. Working away from McDonald down in the turf. The count now 1-2. Swing and strikeout. McDonald is now racing to first after the ball gets away. It bounces off of McNiss's chest protector. So a swinging strikeout, but McDonald reaches aboard on the pass ball. By Tommy Harrison. And it's one of the heroes from yesterday's game, Tommy Harrison. Harrison came up in the ninth inning against Mitchell Scott and promptly blasted a ball 430 feet over the right field wall to tie the game up at four. He comes up with the tying run out at second base in the form of Evan Applewick, the go-ahead run at first, and Brian Zapp. And it looks like that'll be it for Calvin Bickerstaff. He'll go out and talk to the right-hander, and we'll have a new arm to tell you about. Runners on first and second, two away. The nine-hole due up for Miami. The freshman Tommy Harrison will step aside. You're watching Love It Honor Live. So welcome back. Tommy Harrison steps in. He'll face off against Jordan Kalinda. Harrison takes the first pitch for a called strike. Kalinda on the season, a 3.05 ERA. This is 14th appearance, a whip at 0 0.68. Harrison awaits the 0-1. Called strike, finds the zone, and Kalinda is ahead. Kalinda, a freshman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Has seen quite a, a lot of time. 20 innings, 23 strikeouts in those 20 innings of work. Back to back to back sliders. Tommy Harrison doesn't take the bat off his shoulders and Kalinda tiptoes out of trouble. We head to the eighth inning. It's eight to seven here in Oxford.
McKee Field at Hayden Park, top of the eighth inning. Game three between Miami and Kent State. Two up for the Golden Flashes will be Kyle Jackson, Colton Schaller, and Josh Johnson. And it's a new arm for Miami. Never mind, it's still Patrick Mastry in the fourth out there. Now for another inning of work. Mastrian gave up two hits, and two walks. The third baseman, number four, Kyle Jackson. Clean inning here for Mastry in the fourth. Kent State scored two runs in the second, three in each the fourth and seventh inning. Miami scored three runs in the first, three in the third, and one in the fifth. And that's how we've got to this eight to seven. One one here to Kyle Jackson. And Jackson is 0 for 1 with three walks. Has been the recipient of one fourth of the walks that Miami has presented in this ballgame. And Mastrian falls behind three and one on the 88 mile an hour fastball. Wind slightly blowing out to straightaway center. We're two and a half hours into this ball game. But we head to the final two innings. And Mastery in the fourth doesn't get the benefit of the doubt there. Corner of Trackman, that tickled the zone. 11, but Colton Schaller. Mastery hasn't been around, so you typically don't get those borderline pitches. So a leadoff walk. Miami has began every inning since the fourth with a leadoff walk or hit by pitch. So Colton Schaller steps in. He has actually been the recipient of four outs in his last two at-bats, grounded into a double play back in the fifth, lined into a double play just last inning. Called strike and Mastrian for the first time in his relief work is well ahead of the batter. Called strike three on the inside. And a big first out puts down Colton Schaller. 32, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson now steps in. He has walked three times as well. So out of the 12 walks that Miami has allowed, six have come with Kyle Jackson and Josh Johnson at the plate. Cooper Weiss comes in on the slow roller and makes the play only at first because that was his only chance. Tough play as Josh Johnson has a lot of speed. Kyle Jackson did a nice job moving up to second, but it's a 6-3 to three put out for the second Connor outs. Ashby. Connor Ashby with two hits in the ball game. Would love another, another RBI. He's scored twice. Mastrian finds the zone, 0-1. You can see the wind kind of shaking the center field camera. And Mastry in the fourth gets a swinging strike. O oh, two. Called strike three as Mastry and freezes Connor Ashby. And it's a clean top half of the eighth. We head to the bottom half. The Red Ox trail a run.
All right, bottom of the eighth inning here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. We thank you for tuning in to Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Andre Mouse, Kalinda back out on the rubber for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Miami, one, two, three, two up. They're looking to score a couple of runs and take the sweep over the Golden Flashes, and we are ready to roll here in the bottom of the eighth. Benji Brokemont out to right center field. He erases his 0 for 4, and he's got extra bases. Rattling up against the wall, he has the Jets as he's rounding second. Heading for third, the relay. Not in time. Brokemont slides right into the third baseman. The throw was a beautiful relay. Benji Brokemont kicked in a second gear as he rounded second and head for third. And now Duncan's going to go talk to the home plate umpire, Matt Cunningham, and John Sapphire to talk about the relay. The throw was in time. It was a bang, bang play. And they said Brokemont slid in. A collision there between Kyle Jackson and Benji Brokemont. Kyle Jackson moved in from right field over to third when Brody Williams was pinch hit for him. Jake Casey then took right field. So a leadoff triple. Cooper Weiss. Has Miami 90 feet away from tying this game up at eight here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Cooper Weiss, one for three, a home run. Ground out and a pop-up. Takes the 1-0 from Kalinda for a called strike. Weiss with 39 RBIs before the game. So sitting at a square 40 would love number 41. Who is sitting just 90 feet away in the form of Benji Brokemon. What a swing by Brokemon. Came into the at-bat 0 for 4. Erases that with a triple. Chopper out to the shortstop McNamara. Benji Brokemon stays put with the infield in. And it's a 6-3 put out for the first out. David Novak. David Novak steps in, and he's hit by pitch again. It's always Novak. Fourteenth time he's plunked this season. It comes down to Ryland Zaborowski. And you won't have to go too deep into the memory bank to remember what he's done this series. Three home runs, a walk-off home run in game two. Tying run 90 feet away, go-ahead run at first base in the form of David Novak. Kalinda misses on the outside. Weekly hit out to center field. This is going to be a tough play. McNamara tries to Willie Mays it out in shallow center field, but it's a base knock, and the game is evened up at eight all. So in a series where seemingly everything comes off the bat of Ryland Zaborowski at 115 miles an hour, it's off the end of the bat single. That brings this game back to a stalemate. So now Dylan Baker steps in. Baker working on a two for four. Go ahead, run out at second base. And Novak, there's one away. Zaborowski, another run if they should get to him. 
Baker, a double and a single. He scored twice. Chopper out to McNamara. This might be a double play. Flip over to Ashby and then to Longwell in time. So the 6-4-3 double play stops Miami from taking the lead, but they get one across thanks to the RBI single from Ryland Zaborowski. Eight all as we head to a decisive ninth inning. Comes down to a ninth inning. It's eight all. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live. Patrick Mastry in the fourth back out on the rubber for Miami. He'll face off against the top half of Kent State's lineup. Colin Matthews, Justin Mickness, Aiden Longwell. And what a series this has been for Miami. Kent State looking to just scrap one and avoid the sweep. They took the lead back in the seventh. Miami ties it up in the bottom half of the eighth. Game one was taken by Miami, a 12-3 win. Game two was won in extras by the Red Hawks, a walk-off home run from Ryland Zaborowski, and he's the man who tied it up just last half inning. So Matthew steps in. He's reached aboard each of his last three trips to the plate. Came around and scored in the seventh inning, scored in the fourth. Been a tough out. He hits a missile out to center field. Zach McDonald's tracing back. And Colin Matthews gives the Golden Flashes the lead. Straight away center, a home run, a solo shot. Re-gives Kent State. A one-run lead. Six, Justin McNess. So Kent State now has the lead. Now they need three outs, but they can add on more. Justin McNess steps in. What a game for Colin Matthews. His third time scoring. Moves up to the leadoff spot and does his job. And this is sent for a ride out down the right field line. If it's fair, it's gone, but it runs foul. Had the distance. Benji Brokman got on his horse to chase. But it's all for naught, just a long strike. McNiss with two singles. He had that base hit through the left side of the infield on the hit and run his last time. Mastry in the fourth has fallen behind. 3-1. Called strike two. We'll run the count full. Piece down the left field line. This might have a chance for extra bases, but it tails foul. 
Make this just extended the barrel. Poked it down the left field line and went deep, but he's now hit off. Home run foul. Had a double down the left field line. And it went foul. And we'll do the payoff pitch. This is hit for a ride out to left field, but right at Brian Zapp for the first out. So a great at bat there by Mickness. Squared up three different balls. By Aiden Longwell. Once an out all the same. And now Aiden Longwell steps in. Aiden Longwell. Pops one up in the infield. Cooper Weiss moving over towards the middle of the field. Calls off Dylan Baker, and he'll be underneath it for the second. 2 away, and Michael McNamara steps in. Michael McNamara. McNamara, working on a one for three, has walked twice, a single. He's also struck out a pair of times. Two home runs in the series. Man, we've seen a lot of big flies. Wind has been blowing out to center field in all three games, though here in game three, not, not as hard as it was in one and two. This is chopped over through the six hole. Evan Applewick extends himself, but it gets by. Twenty-one, Jake Casey. We've seen five home runs in Game Three: four from Miami, one from Kent State. So that's just in this third game. Trying to get you a number of how many home runs we've seen in this series. Jake Casey comes off the bench for a second at bat and has a single out to right field. Benji Brokman splits up the runners at first and third. As Michael McNamara moves in 90 feet away for more insurance for the Golden Flashes. Number four. Kyle Jackson. So Kyle Jackson steps in. First pitch called strike to Jackson. The official count on home runs in this series is 12. Jackson lines out to Dylan Baker, and we'll head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Do the Red Hawks have any more magic? We'll see when we come back. Here we go, bottom of the ninth inning, 9-8 our score. You're watching Love and on the Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Kalinda out to close the door for the Golden Flashes, and Evan Applewick 
will stand to battle it out. Ryan Zapp, Zach McDonald also do up for the Red Hawks here in the bottom of the ninth inning. How much more magic do these Red Hawks have? Applewick quickly falls behind 0-2. Looking for his first hit of the series. And what a time to get it. Chops one over towards the left side of the infield. Going to be a tough play for Kyle Jackson, who makes the throw on the run. Great job by Jackson working over to his left to take that ball away from Michael McNamara because Mac McNamara would not have had enough time. So a quick first out, and it'll come to Brian Zapp, who hit home run back in the third inning. He's two for four. He struck out his last two trips. Kalinda misses on the inside. A 2-0 in there for a called strike. Worth mentioning that in 20 innings of work coming into today, Kalinda had only given up just one home run. Zap chops one foul. 2-2. We've seen 12 home runs in this series. Eight by Miami. Cooper Weiss with two. Zaborowski with three. Sprinkle the other three from Zapp, Harrison, and McDonald. Count is full. Zapp represents the tie and run so they can get him aboard. Second on the team and walks. Gets on base nearly half the time. The 3-2. Kalinda gets a swinging strikeout. And Zach McDonald will be pinch hit for by Nate Stone. Again, a pinch hitter for the Red Hawks coming in. So with Miami's back against the wall, Nate Stone will step Nate in. Stone. Stone started in the first game of the series, batting in the cleanup spot, went 0 for 2. On the season, Stone's batting 133. 60 at-bats, just eight hits. He gets on base. At a 284 clip. So he'll replace Zach McDonald, who was one for four with a home run and two strikeouts, and Stone comes off the bench and lines one out to Connor Ashby. Hit it on the screws, but right at the second baseman, and Kent State takes a back and forth game three. Miami still takes the series, but Kent State scraps one across here on Sunday. 9 8, our final score. It'll be Kalinda who gets the win. Patrick Mastry in the fourth on the loss. Nine runs on 12 hits for Kent State. Eight runs on 11 hits for Miami. Miami take two of three over the previous leading MAC leaders. But that'll do it for us here in the broadcast booth. We'll be back in a couple of weeks when Miami takes on Akron. That'll be on May 5th, 6th, and 7th. I'm Reed Mounts, and for my producer, Sean Dixon, to my left. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next weekend for the softball three-game series. So we'll see you then. As always, subscribe to the channel, like the stream, the make sure to comment how we do. Jordan, but we'll step aside we'll and we'll and see you next time on Love and Honor Miami Live on Chatterbox 30, Sports.